I am Daniel White the third president of GLM Omnimedia Group and this is the Get Things Done podcast. The simple purpose of this podcast is to help you get things done every day so that you can accomplish something worthwhile with your life. I am a firm believer that God has put each person on earth to do something great for his glory. In this podcast, we are going through the book, Doing It Now, by Edwin C. Bliss. I had just finished speaking at a meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, many years ago. And as I was walking through the airport, as was my custom, I stopped in a little bookstore. I picked up this little book, a yellow book with red and blue, more like an aqua color on the front, very noticeable, and read it in its entirety. It is one of the best books that I have ever read on the subject of productivity, getting things done, clearing your to-do list, and enjoying that wonderful feeling of accomplishment and uh, celebration after those things are done. And along with prayer to God, and the power of God, and the grace of God, it is one of the reasons why I have accomplished so much in my life today. Ladies and gentlemen, I will continue sharing with you some of the principles that Edwin C. Bliss talks about in his book. Uh, But first, as we begin, let me give you this reminder from the Word of God, the Bible. Proverbs 13.4 says, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Our quote for today is from Florence Shin. She said, Every great work, every big accomplishment, has been brought into manifestation through holding to the vision and uh, often just before the big achievement comes apparent failure and discouragement. Today we are continuing with part two of our section titled Developing a Game Plan to Overcome Procrastination. The reason for delaying a task may be that the job is overwhelming. For example, suppose you would like to design and build your own house. However, you realize that there will be countless difficulties with financing, zoning, utilities, style, materials, location, contracting, subcontracting, landscaping, etc. And the whole undertaking seems mind-boggling. And since a boggled mind isn't conducive to action, your dream home remains just a dream. How do you cope with this? One way is what I call, he said, the salami technique. Whenever a task seems overwhelming, pause for a moment and do a little thinking on paper. List chronologically every step that must be taken to complete the job. The smaller the steps, the better. Even little mini tasks that will take only a minute or two should be listed separately. I call this the salami technique because it seems to me that contemplation of an overwhelming task is like looking at a large uncut salami. It's a huge, crusty, greasy, unappetizing chunk 
you don't feel you can get your teeth into it. But when you cut it into thin slices, you transform it into something quite different. Those thin slices are inviting. They make your mouth water. And after you've sampled one slice, you tend to reach for another. Cutting up your overwhelming task into tiny segments can have the same effect. Now, instead of looking at a gargantuan project, you're looking at a series of tiny tasks, each of which, considered separately, is manageable. And you begin to realize that they will indeed be considered separately. The maxim of Chinese philosopher Leo Zhu uh, that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step doesn't really help us much until we know precisely in which direction we want to travel. With our list in front of us, we have a concrete idea of what that first step will be, and also the second and the third. We have a road map that will guide us to our destination. Since each step completed leads logically to the next, we quickly establish momentum and the job is underway. It all sounds so simple, and if you'll forgive a candid observation, it seems rather elementary. Don't most people do something like this? Does anyone ever build a house, for example, without making lists? Of course not. But too often our dreams wind up in limbo without the list even being made. Or a list is made, but it isn't the kind we're talking about. A meticulously prepared step by step list of small tasks that need to be done, not just a random jotting down of a bunch of major things to do. Seals the commitment, provides a blueprint for action, and triggers that action. But to be effective, it must be chronological and it must be detailed. It must be a compilation of instant tasks. Allow me to repeat that. It must be a compilation of instant tasks so that you are dealing with salami slices, not a big old greasy piece of salami. Remember that while this approach is especially helpful in getting started on overwhelming tasks, it also works with smaller ones that don't really seem to call for a sequential outline of actions. For example, suppose you want to make a certain suggestion to your boss, but find yourself putting it off because you are afraid it will be rejected. It may seem that what is indicated is a simple one-step action, Just go in and make your suggestion and see what happens. And if you can make yourself do so, of course, that's the way to go. But if you find yourself procrastinating, try breaking that one-step action down on paper into tiny increments. Your salami slices might look like this. Number one, check file to refresh memory of pertinent facts. Number two, outline presentation. Number three, mentally rehearse presentation. Number four, identify possible objections. Number five, determine response to each objection. Number six, arrange time for presentation. Number seven, make presentation. But those are the steps one would naturally take anyway, aren't they? Of course. You're not doing anything you wouldn't do anyway, except for one thing, the actual writing of the list. Making a sequential list is an easy thing to do. 
and once it exists, it acts as sort of a detonator launching you into the task you were putting off. It also serves another purpose. If you are interrupted during the performance of the task, you will know precisely where to pick up when you return. Without a written list, you often experience a mental block about resuming the activity. You've forgotten just where you were and what was to come next. Properly used, a pencil can be one of the most effective weapons in the battle against procrastination and not getting things done. My dear friend, in our next episode, we will continue to talk about developing a game plan to get over procrastination and not getting things done. Now, let's pray together the prayer that we normally pray together, the old prayer called the common prayer that includes the words we have left undone, those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. So let's pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Now, dear friend, the greatest secret to getting things done with your life for the glory of God is to have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. When you have Jesus Christ in your life, you can Say with Paul in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Confess your sins. Acknowledge that you are a sinner who needs a Savior. For the Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have left things undone that we should have done. We all have done things that we should not have done. So just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because he did what he was supposed to do. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. And all you have to do is believe on him. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul, and he will. This is something that you need to get done. You need to be born again. You need to be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, God bless you, and remember, if you have something to do, there is no better time to do it than now. <laughs>